Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome aboard. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you stick around a while. Today's video is going to be all about lipstick, makeup type scented fragrances. This has got to be one of my all time favorite videos I have ever done. I love the scent of Candied Violets. You know that I love Insolence by Guerlain, so you know this one is going to be part of the video. So I just wanted to put a big conglomeration of these fragrances together and just do a big video and just show you guys some of my favorites that I have right now. One is actually on the way, but I've smelled it before. I know all about it and I will be talking about it as well. These are in no particular order except for I did save the best for last. But before we get into this video, I wanted to give a special thank you and a shout out to a company called Teddy Blake. They are located in New York. They are a retailer of leather goods, leather handbags, beautiful handbags, you guys. They reached out to me and asked if I would like to collaborate with them. And I follow them on Instagram, have followed them forever. I will put their Instagram link up here on the screen. I'll also have it in the description box. You guys, this is the most beautiful handbag ever. It is so well made. It's so beautiful. It doesn't have that chemically smell like some handbags do. So let me grab it real quick and I will show you what it looks like. First of all, this handbag comes in a beautiful presentation, just like you would see um, other hand, other high-end ha handbags such as Louis Vuitton and you know the like. And when you open this up, you are going to find the handbag in a typical dust, uh, a dust cover bag. And then when you unwrap it, you pull it out, you will see that this is a beautiful, beautiful leather handbag. It has the option to um, go into a shoulder strap bag. Of course, this is just a, um, a hand tote type of bag. It does have the closure up top so you can uh, close this, you know, kind of close the straps and keep them together in uniform. There is a hang tag here that does say a Teddy Blake on it, super cute. The stitching on this is beautiful, you guys. Um, I will put the link down in the description box to this exact handbag that I picked up. They have also been super generous to provide you guys with a discount code. So if you are in the market for a leather handbag, if you have been looking at these handbags for a while, I would suggest you go down to the description box and grab that discount code and use it so that you can get some money off of your handbag here. With it being back to school, I think this is super timely because they have all different types of handbags. This is just one that I chose. They have a bunch of different handbags. I'll put a few of them up here on the screen and kind of show you the variety that they have. They also have wallets. They have all sorts of things. So, um, and these are also made in Italy. So just bear that in mind that you are getting a very high end handbag. Like I said, the inside is absolutely gorgeous. It's very roomy. It has an inside pocket that I would probably designate for a cell phone. And again, this is, this is a luxurious handbag that does not smell weird. It smells very, very high end. It is high end. And I just think that if you are in the market for a high end bag, check out Teddy Blake before you head over to the thousands and thousands of dollar handbags. Check them out first and see what you think. I highly recommend them. Like I said, this handbag is probably one of the most luxurious handbags. It's right up there with a couple Louis Vuittons that I've owned before in the past. I actually bought a Louis Vuitton uh, on Rodeo Drive probably about five years ago when we were out there. I was out there with my husband. He was on a, um, a business type of trip and I was like, you know what? I'm going to treat myself to this handbag. I had just finished uh, grad school, so I wanted to treat myself. But if you just need a new handbag, these are affordable quality luxury handbags. Check them out. I will put all the information down in the description box below so that you can see it. 
but I wanted to bring that handbag in on this video because how often do we see on Fragrantica where people say, oh yeah, this fragrance reminds me of when I was a child and I would go through my mom's handbag and this, this scent is like the scent of maybe a little bit of leather or suede, maybe some fruit gum, maybe she had some fruit chewing gum in her bag, maybe she had her lipstick half open, maybe like a compact half open. So you get the vibe. That's kind of like that makeup-y bag scent. This bag is the epitome of like the leather handbag of the 70s, 80s, 90s that your mom probably had. Like I said, it does not have any weird smells or anything like that. It is just a beautiful, beautiful handbag. So with all that being said, I want to get into this video. And like I said, I've got 20 fragrances here in no particular order. Um, the, fir the very first one has been discontinued, but I have seen it on Macari. I've seen it on eBay, different places like that. So, um, and also the website for this one does not say that it's never coming back. It just says it's out of stock. So I have put the link down in the description box for number one. This is H&M Lipstick. And because the website doesn't say that it's never coming back, I went ahead and linked you to the H&M website to go ahead and like type your email address in so that if it ever does come back in stock, you can be notified. Um, I don't know though. Sometimes I have my doubts about this one coming back because at one time this one was like $1.99, which is not terrible because this is a little tiny. This is like a 0.7 ounce. So that's like a travel spray, like a pen spray. It's just a little squattier, shorter bottle, but it just, it went on clearance and I haven't seen it back yet. But again, like I said, it's still on their website. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Lipstick by H&M is just one of those fragrances. If you go to Fragrantica, I'm going to put the notes on the screen for all of the fragrances that I have on these 20. But if you go to Fragrantica, all it says is lipstick and which I find funny because this one to me, it's more complex than that. While it does smell like some lipstick from the 80s and 90s, like that L'Oreal that you used to could get, or maybe there's like an older Revlon, even Max Factor, if you are old enough to remember that. I don't even know if they still have Max Factor, but I definitely remember Max Factor makeup. And what I smell in this is, I smell some fruit in here probably maybe some raspberry like most um, lipstick type fragrances have and i do smell like that violet smell it's not very complex once you spray this what you spray is what you get so it's not going to last a whole whole long time i did buy a couple of backups so i do not plan to be out of this fragrance anytime soon but i wanted to bring that one on and let you guys know that this is just one of those scents that is just absolutely gorgeous this one i've noticed on fragrantica people either love this or they hate it and i don't know where the hate comes from because it smells just like lipstick the only problem i have with it is that it doesn't last very long but again, you know, lipstick fragrances, violet in general, violet is not a fragrance that is super heavy. It is not super powerful. It's not gonna be like a patchouli that knocks you on the ground. Um, so with it being $1.99, if you did get a chance to grab it, it is super cheap. You can respray it when you wanna spray it. It's tiny, throw it in your purse, throw it in your pocket, respray it, touch it up. It's totally worth it to me. The next one I have is by Juliet Has a Gun. And this one is called Lipstick Fever. This one has been out for a while. And this probably is one of the top five. Um, if I had to give a top five of all my lipstick fragrances or makeup type scents, this one would be in the top five, possibly the top three of my favorite um, lipstick scents. This one to me does not really smell like makeup, like makeup powder. It smells more like the waxy waxy lipstick vibe although i will say this um with this having the raspberry and the violet and the iris and the patchouli in it i will say that this one does the patchouli does show up so if you are not a fan of patchouli on this one and i've seen some people say oh i like lipstick scents but that julia has a gun there's just something in there that's just gross 
uh, just can't deal with it, whatever. It's probably the patchouli in here. If this did not have the violet and the iris note in it, this would probably be a straight up fruit chuli scent. So if you know what fruit chulis are, it's basically just a combination of different fruits like strawberry, raspberry, blueberry sometimes, and they'll just mix it with patchouli. And I've got a couple of fruit chuli scents. I have to be in the mood to wear them, but that would be what this would be if this did not have the violet and the iris in it. So the violet in here is making it smell like lipstick. You really don't get that butteriness that you have in some lipstick scents. There's really not a big waxy quality to this. It's just a very pretty lipstick scent. Is it lipstick on my replica? No, it's not, but I do like this fragrance. I have a backup bottle of this just in case this one goes stupid and goes discontinued, but it does lend that 90s lipstick type of smell. I actually have a lipstick out here that is by Maybelline. I don't think I've talked about Maybelline lipsticks yet, smelling like lipstick, but this would have to go into the category of the Revlon, the older Revlon fragrances, or the older Revlon lipsticks, the older L'Oreal lipsticks. I'm not sure if L'Oreal still has that lipsticky smell that we all kind of grew up with. Um, this is the Color Sensationals line by Maybelline. I don't even know if they make this anymore, but this one here, this is, this is a pretty, pretty lipstick scent. And I'm not like, here's the deal. Like I don't like to wear lipstick that's scented because I don't want to taste it, but I like lipstick scented fragrances. I mean, that's just kind of crazy, but I guess I just don't like the taste of it in my mouth, but I do like it. I do like the scent of it. So, uh, that one, some of these do smell like this type of um, lipstick. Now, if you hear me talking about makeup, I'm probably referring to uh, like the Meteorites Powder by Guerlain. Let's see, what's the other one? Maybe um, CoverGirl that came in the little compact, the brown compact that's been around forever. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen as well. Uh, that one smells very make makeup powdery, that classic scent that we all think of. And then another one would have to be the Cody Airspun makeup, and I'll put it up on the screen as well. It's like a loose powder, and people use it now. It's still sold today. People use it like as a setting type of powder. It's great for that. It does have that powdery, old-timey makeup smell that I do love. So the third one on my list is one that always gets talked about. If somebody talks about fragrances that smell like lipstick, this always comes up, and unfortunately, it is not a strong fragrance meaning it's not going to last that long on you probably it, it's 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 probably one of the worst performing fragrances that i own this one is called calvin klein eternity intense uh, i get asked this a lot if this one smells like the original eternity no the original eternity is a heavy floral i would say it's a very strong vintage white floral fr fragrance this is completely opposite. So I'm looking at the notes here. This one has notes of orris. It has watery notes, bergamot, iris, osmanthus, rose, vanilla, musk, and sandalwood. And this one is not as sweet as Lipstick Fever by Juliet Has a Gun. But surprisingly, this, although this does smell like lipstick, this one is, it kind of pulls the lipstick and the makeup scent, the powdery makeup scent. So this one does kind of smell like something that you have pulled out of your, your mom or your grandmom's bag, you know, like back in the day, maybe you pulled out a piece of chewing gum and it smelled like, you know, some kind of perfume and powder and whatever. Uh, that is what this smells like. Um, again, the longevity is not great though. So if you want this to be your scent of the day, you're going to have to take it with you. It's going to have to ride shotgun in your part, in your pocket, in your purse, because it's just not going to last. This one probably lasts about 30 to 40 minutes on me before it starts drying down. So I've often thought maybe, you know, there is this method out there that I have seen on TikTok and everywhere else where you have to spray your fragrance on as soon as you get out of the shower. And I've always felt like that was kind of like a thing because 
if you take a hot shower, your pores are open. So if you spray this all over with open pores, it just kind of stands to reason that this would last longer that way and then maybe layer it with an unscented lotion and then maybe spray it again. So if you try that method and it works, let me know. I've always, I've never done that type of layering, but I have sprayed perfume on before I even dry off out of the shower and it does seem to last longer because like I said, your pores are open, you know, you're kind of hot and I do think that helps it last longer. Another fragrance that always comes up when people talk about lipstick scents is Dior Alm Intense by Dior and this one was released back in 2010, 2011, so this one is not new to the game. Uh, it is marketed for men and it has top notes of lavender with middle notes of iris and brett and pear and then it has like base notes of virginia cedar and vetiver. I'm not a huge fan of vetiver but thankfully I don't get a whole lot of this when I spray it. This one to me I have to really really pretend that this is a lipstick or a powder scent. It it doesn't give me a strong a vibe of lipstick as say the Calvin Klein or uh, Juliet Has a Gun, the Lipstick Fever. It doesn't give me that kind of vibes, but it does kind of give me a, a like a makeup scent. So for that reason, I included it into this video just because it's talked about so much in this category. But there's nothing in here that makes this super sweet. There's no fruit in here like some have except for i just get a tad i mean it's got pear in it but i don't really pick that up i don't really pick up any fruit in this at all if this had had a little bit of raspberry or something like that then i could definitely see where this one would pull into more into a makeup -y, lipsticky type of scent but overall, if I was wanting a fragrance that had a lipstick or a makeup type of vibe, this would not be the first one that I reached for. As a matter of fact, this is going into my husband's um, uh, bathroom, his little bathroom area when I get off of this video because it's just not really, it just doesn't really fit the bill for what I'm looking for. But again, I wanted to bring it into this video because it is talked about so much when people talk about lipstick or makeup fragrances. Now this next one is definitely a lipstick scent. This is Mad About You by Pierre Guillaume and this one has uh, notes of licorice, violet, sour cherry, powdery notes, floral notes, black tea, and woody notes. This is the fragrance that you could pull out a tube of lipstick out of this purse, okay? And if this lipstick has been in this purse for a long time, it's going to kind of pick up this leather vibe. So you've got leather, you've got lipstick, you've got maybe a sweet accord, uh, like this sour cherry note that's in here, these candied violets. It smells like if you had a little tin of those candied violets in there, the candied violet candy, and it had been like partially opened and maybe there was a compact of powder in there and then you've got the leather from the bag and then i mean this is one of those scents that is completely unisex just because this has a lipstick vibe does not mean that a guy cannot pull this off and at the same time it's feminine so i have no idea what that's about but they have really pulled one off here you can actually smell now i don't get a lot of licorice in here so if you're anti-licorice you may like the fact that this is not heavy on the licorice but I do get lots of sour cherry. I do get a black tea note and I do get that sour cherry. And I actually do, I actually do get leather in here. Um, some people say this shares the same DNA as Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. And I do not understand that at all. This is much more complex than that. The only thing that this reminds me of, if I could even give you a clue is it it does slightly ever so slightly really slightly remind me of the original lolita limpica from way back from yesteryear like if you can even find it anymore that's kind of what this would smell like i got this from lucky scent and lucky scent's website has the notes listed as black tea so they're different black tea licorice red fruits lipstick violet and leather so Fragrantica does not list the leather in here. 
but it is prominent. If you are not a leather fan or leather fragrance fan, you probably will not like this. I don't even feel like this is a safe blind buy. Uh, you're best off getting this one from Lucky Scent for a couple of bucks and trying it before you buy it because this is kind of on the expensive side. But again, if I had to put this in any type of order, this would probably be in the top five. The next one I have is super different again from anything I've shown so far. And this one is Angel's Dust by Francesca Bianchi. And the notes on this one are, now the notes on this one from the Francesca Bianchi website include back black pepper, mimosa, rose, iris, musk, sandalwood, balsam, benzoin, and vanilla. And I think... So the notes on Fragrantica, I'm looking at them right now. The notes on Fragrantica includes rose, which I do not get any rose. Um, do not get any rose at all. But I will say, even though this one is not listing Oris butter, this is a very buttery iris here. It may have it in there and it's just not listed, but this one is very buttery. It's very, it's a very buttery iris almost so buttery that the powderiness is kind of cut down. It's ambery and it's, it is powdery, but like I said, it's not a baby powder type of scent. It's more of a luxurious high-end makeup smell. Okay. So it's not necessarily lipsticky as much as it is makeup-y. This one is super complex. And the first time I smelled it, it was almost as the name implies, it is very ethereal. It is one of those fragrances that when you smell it, it just smells like it does not even belong in this world. It's just beautiful. It is a beautiful fragrance. It's even borderline like a doll head scent. If you are into that sort of thing, almost like if a Cabbage Patch doll was eating a, almost like if a Cabbage Patch doll were eating a powdered donut but not quite that sweet, if that makes any sense whatsoever. It, there is some sweetness here, but it's not cloying. It doesn't overtake the fragrance. It's just a beautiful, uh, beautiful iris fragrance. And it is also a little bit on the pricey side. So I would get a sample of it as well, because I do not think it is a blind, a safe blind buy at all. The next one I have has been discontinued. Again, all of these favorites that I have have been discontinued. However, I was able to get this in my royalty scent subscription, which is a monthly subscription that you pay so much per month. You can even get three of these a month, or you can just get two. Sometimes I end up with three. You have to pay extra to get three. I think you pay $19.99 to get the extra one, but, um, the subscription is just for two of these per month, but they had this meteorites um, fragrance and I snagged it. So uh, meteorites by Guerlain, I'll put the full bottle here up on the screen. This one was released back in 2000. So it's been a while. It's been out a while too. It's not new to the game at all. It's actually quite opposite of some of the other ones that I've talked about. And this one is not very complex at all. You guys, this one smells exactly like the meteorites. Uh, makeup powder by Guerlain. It is a candied violet scent, although it's not as sweet as the Insolence by Guerlain, which I will talk about that one soon. And it doesn't really have lipstick vibes here. It has more makeup vibes, just as the name would imply, because it smells just like the Meteorites uh, makeup powder. And if you're after a discontinued fragrance, Check Royalty Scents website because from time to time they do have discontinued scents and I really hate the fact that this one, was, the, the original formulation was discontinued. I think you can still get this in like on eBay and things like that, but it can be super expensive and it's hard to find and it's just really, it's sad. You know, it's sad when they discontinue such good fragrances like this. It just kind of makes me mad. As far as the notes go on this one, this is not a very complex fragrance. It has top notes of iris and green notes and then it has violet as the middle note and heliotrope as the base note. And like I said, I would spray this, but I don't want to waste it. What I do is if I ever want to smell it and I'm, you can tell I'm kind of rationing this out. I have really not used this one much at all. Um, I'll just come in here and take a good whiff, maybe put just like a dab on my, 
uh, a dab on my hand just to kind of enjoy the scent for a couple couple of minutes but yeah this one again meteorites by Guerlain it is a straightforward non-complex makeup -y powder type of scent and I do get those green I wanted to mention that I do get those green notes in the meteorites powder there are no green notes in Guerlain uh, insolence by Guerlain so you do get like a brighter type of scent with the meteorite. So like I said, it does have the green notes in it. The next one I have is Prada and it is called Pink Flamingos. There are a ton of notes listed for this one. I mainly just get a cherry iris type of fragrance with this one that comes off like a makeup scent. So this one is not a very strong lipstick scent, but it is a uh, makeup scent. This is a huge bottle, by the way. It has a magnetic cap. This one kind of reminds me of Guerlain's, another discontinued fragrance, I think it may be, called French Kiss. And it kind of also reminds me of Black Perfecto by Guerlain. It's like a, it's like a combination of both, maybe put together. This one just seems to be, it seems to have more of a violet aspect rather than an iris. Either way, it's just a good, good fragrance. And this fragrance here is by Prada's line called the Old Factories line. And they have several in that line that are discontinued. I think Tainted Love is one of them, Double Dare. There's several in here. But just to remember, this one is not super strong. You can tell the, the juice is really light in here. This one lasts probably a couple of hours on me as well. This fragrance is not too sweet or cloying. It's one of those fragrances where if you are considering breaking the rules and wearing this somewhere or maybe to an office or somewhere where you are not supposed to be wearing fragrances, then this is probably going to pass because it's not super strong. Uh, just to run through the notes real quick before I move on from this one, top notes of mainly just citruses, bergamot, lime, and lemon. Uh, if you'll notice, they have cherry and iris very prominent on their graphics. And then it goes into uh, Japanese rose, raspberry, regular rose, peach, uh, black currant, violet, iso -E super, vanilla, white musk. And again, I do get the musk in here. I do get quite a bit of musk on the drawdown, but it's just mainly a cherry, a cherry violet scent. So super fun, super pretty. That one would probably have to be in my top five fragrances as well. Next, we have one of my all-time favorites. If you watch this channel, you know I'm in love with uh, Insolence by Guerlain. This one is Candied Violets all the way. It is playful. It is uplifting. It is a sweet powdered candy violet scent. It lasts about six hours on me and the projection is pretty good at first. This is, this is pretty strong to be a candied violet fragrance. Notes on this one are violet, powdery notes, iris, and red berries. And that's exactly what this smells like. It's not complex. What you spray is what you get. You don't end up with something strange toward the end. It pretty much smells the same uh, on dry down as it does when you first spray it. Not to be confused with My Insolence, which is a gorgeous fragrance. Also, My Insolence has a way different vibe to it. It has patchouli and different things in it. It's not like this to me at all. And it's extremely hard to find. And it's and if you do find it, it's very expensive. And if you guys know, if, the, if someone is selling a bottle of this, an empty bottle that has a cap, can you please let me know? Because this drives me crazy. I need a cap for this. I bought this as a tester and I just really need a cap for this because this bottle would look so much better with one. So if you see one on eBay, I've been looking myself and I just haven't found one. Um, just give me a heads up if you have seen a empty bottle with a cap. Next is Prada Candy Gloss. I have to really, really, really close my eyes and tell myself that this is a lipstick type of scent over and over and over to make myself believe it. I see this one talked about all the time. I see it in videos. I see people talking about this being a lipstick scent. Maybe I'm just not getting it, but to me, but to me, this is just a powdery cherry scent. It's almost a little, because the cherry is so fake in here, it's almost like a, almost like a medicinal type of scent. So 
I included it in this video because so many people talk about this being a lipstick scent and I just kind of wanted to say, you know, let's talk about the notes. There's sour cherry up top, there's cassis, there is peach and rose and orange blossom in the middle. And then on the in the base there's vanilla, almond, benzoin, heliotrope, and musk. This is a nice scent, don't get me wrong. I have to be in the mood to wear it. I have to be in the mood for that cherry powderiness. If you were looking for a lipstick scent, I don't think I would grab this one first. There's so many notes and accords in here that give this a powderiness that this is not gonna be the first thing I choose if I want something that smells like lipstick. It's pretty, don't get me wrong. It's a pretty fragrance, but I have to be in the mood to wear it. And because there are uh, orange blossom and rose and these um, benzoin accord, musk and all this, it almost makes the cherry in this smell like cherry blossom and not just sour cherry. And there's a huge difference. I am not a cherry blossom fan whatsoever. I do like cherry in fragrances though, but that is, this one is so powdery that like I said, it tends to go more into the cherry blossom. And like I said, if you feel like it smells like lipstick, then go ahead and wear it like crazy. I do think this is a pretty scent, but like I said, it is, uh, it is it's not along the same lines as Juliet Has a Gun Lipstick Fever. It's not along the lines of H&M lipstick or nothing like that. Um, so, like I said, I just brought it on here because so many people talk about it. This video is going to be super long if I don't kind of speed it up. So, the next one I have is 1889 Moulin Rouge by History de Parfum. One word on this is stunner. This is one of those fragrances that when I first sprayed this, I was absolutely floored at how sophisticated this is and how much of an entire vibe this is. This is an entire vibe in a bottle. This is an entire mood in a bottle. Uh, this is burlesque. This is red lipstick. It's vinyl pants. It's like I said, it's just a whole mood. This one has been around a while, probably not a safe blind buy at all. And it's a bit strange when you first spray it, probably because of the plum and cinnamon and tangerine top notes. Those are just notes that typically just do not go together or you wouldn't think that they would. Um, but this smells nothing like anything I have in my collection. It's a combination of lipstick, face powder, um, old leather bags, maybe a vintage vibe. And this kind of reminds me of what maybe a burlesque would smell like, maybe a burlesque dancer, like in the 1940s, maybe, like I picture Gypsy Rose wearing this, or even Josephine Baker, who was absolutely stunningly beautiful, by the way. Anyway, this one is so strong and long-lasting, you have to basically just scrub it to get it off. It lasts 12 plus hours on me. And like I said, it's not for everyone. It is not a safe blind buy whatsoever. I highly recommend a decan of that if you can get your hands on it before you buy it because it is way different than anything in my collection. The next one I have is by Ducita and it is called Splendiris. And I have it here in this little tiny, I have two of these. I got these from Lucky Scent and I poured these into a 4 ml decant that has a sprayer on it so I could spray it on and kind of get the gist of it. And granted, two of these is not much to sample with, but I got just enough to know that I wanted a full bottle of it. It is on the way. And this one does have quite a few notes on it as well. I'll put the picture of the real bottle up here. Uh, and it's big, big violet at first. I mean, it is, there's no mistaking that it's violet when you first spray it. It's a real green violet too, so it's not too powdery. It's not too makeup-like in the beginning either. It's just, it almost starts out like you're walking up to a wet violet bush, if that makes sense. And while there's no iris listed here, there is oris, which is the root of an iris 
plant. So that may be why I'm getting a little bit of butteriness in with this one. Um, I'll put the notes up here on the screen. You can see it has violet leaves, carrot seed, uh, which I absolutely love that note in anything. Fig leaf, it has bergamot, mandarin, orange, violet, orris, rose, jasmine, sunbok, vanilla, ambergris, Haitian vetiver, cedar. So it has a ton of notes in it. Just know that it is just a very, very prominent violet that's not too sweet. You know, like the other ones have a lot of sweetness to them because they have like that jammy raspberry vibe. This one does not have that at all. So this one is not going to be a super sweet violet, like a candied violet. It's more of a true, true violet scent where, like I said, if you walked up onto a wet violet bush, that's what you're going to smell. It has some green accords to it. Very, very beautiful scent. Probably one of my top five as well. The next one I have is La Violette by Anique Goutal. The notes in here are violet stem, violet leaves, and Turkish rose. The website also lists raspberry on here, which I do think it has, although Fragrantica does not list it. And this is a true violet fragrance as well. It's not muddled with a bunch of other notes like the other one was. It's just a pure violet experience. It's not too strong. It's not too cloying. It's just a candied violet fragrance and don't get me wrong it's not too sweet it's not headache inducing it's just a very simple fragrance and like all other Anique Goutal fragrances this one is not going to overpower or anything like that most of her fragrances are pretty tame this one probably lasts about three to four hours on me maybe definitely definitely a girly smell but I don't think anybody could ever say that violet ever smells alluring or seductive or sexy definitely flirty definitely girly the next one i have is number 14 it's blue marine bellissimo intense this one is very very powdery if you have the regular blue marine it does not smell like this at all this is one of those that smells like more like face powder than it does lipstick um, it's not waxy or buttery since there's no uh, there's no orris root in here and there's none listed out there um, but the notes listed are ginger orange grapefruit passion flower peony jasmine cashmere wood orchid heliotrope musk and sandalwood i also have to be in the mood to wear this one because it is so powdery so super powdery so i really have to be in the mood for this one don't get me wrong it is beautiful also but i do have to be in the mood to wear this type of fragrance the next one I have is by Essay Lauder, and this one is Modern Muse Le Rouge Gloss. And to me, this one is a floral fragrance with just a hint of a makeup scent. Uh, let's look at the notes on this one. We've got top, oh, we got sour cherry, carrot seed, pink pepper, and mandarin orange. Middle notes of vinyl, rose, leather, and jasmine, with base notes of honey, vanilla, patchouli, styrax, saffron, and labdanum. I do not smell any vinyl whatsoever in this. I really don't even smell leather. Um, and one thing about this, this one tends to go a little burnt smell on me. And I think it's because of the saffron that's in it. And I see a lot of people complain about the Dua fragrances going like at burnt rubber smell. And I do think that Dua uses a lot of saffron in their fragrances. So if that is the case, that is probably why it's pulling a burnt type of rubber smell. Um, but this one is just, it's pretty. Again, it's pretty. It, it, people do talk about this being a lipstick or a makeup type scent. And I would have to say it's more of a makeup y type scent than it is a lipstick scent. Um, but I just get like this cherry blast. On, an, on the initial spray, and then I just get the rose and patchouli. And I think anytime patchouli is on the scene, it's difficult for other notes to kind of shine and come through. Um, but if you know me, you know I like patchouli, and that's probably why I really like this one. But I wouldn't reach for it per se if I was reaching for a, you know, a spot on lipstick or a makeup type of scent. 
Number 16 is Sweet by Lolita Lempica, and this one is also talked about in the fragrance community and in videos. I've seen it talked about uh, as being a makeup or lipstick type of scent, and to me, this is basically like red gummy bears mixed with powder. Um, I know that sounds gross, but um, it almost smells like, to me, like cherry chapstick with a little bit of powder in it. And notes on this one are sour cherry, sugar, cacao, iris, angelica, musk, and cashmere wood. The angelica in here is also making that cherry smell like cherry blossom. So although I'm not the biggest fan of cherry blossom, I do think this is a pretty fragrance. I do prefer the so sweet to this one though. So if you have so sweet, um, I think that one it would be my choice out of the both out of the two of these but I just get a lot of red gummy bears with powder with this one. If you own this one, drop me a comment down in the comment section below and let me know if you feel like this is one of those lipsticky or makeup-y type of scents because I'm just not feeling it. I wanted to include this one though because it is cherry and, and it does have that powdery type of scent so people want to lump it into that category. I'm not so sure though. The next one I have is so worth the money. This one is $11 on Fragrance X. And this one is called Touch With Love by Fred Heyman. And the notes on Fragrantica are way wrong. If you go to the website and you actually pull the notes up on this one, top notes of bergamot, mandarin, and cyclamen. Mid notes of peach, berries, freesia, and violet with base notes of cedarwood, musk, and vanilla. And what I get from this one again, you guys, is candied violets. It's not a strong or overpowering scent, but definitely one to pick up for the price if you like these type of fragrances. I would have to say that this one is, I'll go, I'll go a little step further with this. This is a candied violet scent with just a little touch of, of a shampoo-y vibe. Very unique. If you're into this sort of fragrance where you like the candied violet scent with the raspberry, but you like just a little extra in there, this one does have, like I said, that shampoo-y type of vibe to it. Very unique. $11, $12, you can't go wrong. I don't know how long they'll have this one on the website, so if you're able to go out there and grab it, I think it would be a pretty safe blind buy if you like these type of fragrances. And then the next one I have, number 18, is Dazzle by Paris Hilton. Again, just like Prada Candy Gloss, I have to close my eyes and say, this is a makeup -y type of scent. This is a makeup -y type of scent. I mean, I almost have to really, really make myself, convince myself that that's what it is. Maybe more lipsticky than makeup -y. Um, It has sour cherry up top, red apple and peach. Middle notes of orchid, violet, and orange blossom, and then base notes of vanilla, champagne, patchouli, and musk. And it again, it is a very, very pretty scent. I I reach for this one, but I'm not reaching for it because I'm reaching for a makeupy or lipstick type of scent. I'm just reaching for it because it is just a very pretty sour cherry fragrance that just happens to have some violet in it. Um, because there's other notes in here like orchid and orange blossom and peach and champagne and patchouli, then, you know, it's, it's kind of complex. It's not going to be just like your H&M where it's pretty linear or even your insolence, you know, fragrance. This one has a little bit more to it. Some people say the cherry in this one is very, um, like a, um, like a fake cherry scent. I really don't pick up on that. I never have. To me, it has so many other notes in there that if it is a fake cherry scent, it just doesn't bother me because it kind of gets lost with everything else, but definitely worth the money on that one. Even if you are not looking for a lipstick scent and you just want a pretty cherry violet type of scent, that's just an air, a safe everyday type of scent. That's a great price point. The next one that I want to talk about is by Atkinson's and it is Love and Idleness and I'll put a picture of it up on the screen. It has been ordered. I have had this in the past. This one reminds me of Insolence by Guerlain, but it's a tad bit more complex as well because it does have a little tiny bit of patchouli in it. Not so much patchouli as the Lipstick Fever has, but it it is right up there with 
I love this fragrance so much. It is right up there with the number one fragrance of all time and it's coming up next. This fragrance is very, very feminine and I'd say it's a cross between if you had Insolence and you had Juliet Has a Gun and you had Replica Lipstick On, which I'm about to talk about, if you had all three of those together, that to me is what love and idleness smells like. It is not talked about. I don't know why. For Grantica, everybody loves it. Everybody says it's one of the best violet scents they've ever smelled. And sadly, nobody talks about it. It is kind of expensive, um, but they do have it at FragranceNet right now. And I've got the link to all these down in the description box. So you can go in there and look at number 19 and click it and it'll take you to the fragrance. But you guys, it is, I would say it's probably out of my top five. It is right up there at the top, right up under my number one my number one is going to be lipstick on pardon the bottle this is all i have it's a 15 ml i got this one from someone who was doing a decant of a bottle that was well kept and i absolutely adore adore this fragrance and i hate that i adore it because why would you fall in love with a fragrance that you can no longer buy that aggravates me to death but this is the epitome of all lipstick fragrance and i'm not just saying that because it's discontinued and i'm having a moment where i feel like i'm gonna have a panic attack if i don't get it because it's never gonna make a comeback it's not like that it was really only after this was discontinued that i discovered it believe it or not i remember smelling this one in the store in sephora a while back and thinking wow I'm not really into that because I wasn't into the whole lipstick makeup y type sense at that time. And it was just kind of there. Like it didn't really leave an impression on me. When I got into these lipstick fragrance about a year ago, I said, you know what? I'm going to go out and I'm just going to just do it. I'm just going to go out and purchase a full bottle. But then I started thinking, you know, what if this doesn't smell like the way I used to remember it? So, um, I reached out to someone that I knew had this and I paid about $25 for this 15 ml decant and I know I'm going to blow through it. So I've been really trying to hold back because it is the most beautiful lipstick makeup. It, this one is a cross to me and I know it's lipstick on, but it's a cross between lipstick and makeup. So it's the best of both worlds, you guys. And you know, it may be to the point where I just have to go ahead and suck it up and buy this because I, I find myself buying fragrances over and over and over that say that they smell like this, where I could have just went and spent $230 on eBay and gotten this fragrance and, and been through. But I just hate the fact that when fragrances are discontinued, that you have to go out and spend an ungodly amount of money when you're never going to be able to get it again probably one day at all i mean these fragrances do you know ruin and go off you know in time this one is still beautiful and i do believe that if you can find a full bottle or a slightly gently used bottle out there on ebay or macari you know just look at the ratings make sure it's someone you can trust and shop at your own risk but I feel like if you can find one that has been well taken care of, you may have it for the next couple of years. If you take good care of it, keep it out of light, keep it out of heat, keep it away from humidity. But you know what's sad? It's like you pay all this money for a fragrance that you know that they will never reproduce again. So it's kind of sad. And it's one of those things where we really just need to stop doing that. If something's been discontinued, we really just need to let it go and just fall in love with what we can get. I do know that Dua is supposedly going to be making a dupe of this lipstick on, and I hope they make it last longer than lipstick on because if I had to file a complaint about this fragrance, the only complaint I would have is that it just doesn't last long. But again, with these type of fragrances, it is hard for these fragrances to last a long time when you've got notes like violet and iris, really light, delicate, powdery notes. They just, they're just not going to hang like a patchouli-based fragrance. Now, this one lasts a long time on me just because it has the patchouli in the base, but I know not everybody's into patchouli. Some people absolutely despise it. They're very sensitive to it. 
So if they spray this, they're going to immediately pick up on it and just be like, no, I'm turned off. You know, I'm turned off on it big time. I do have two honorable mentions, though, that I want to get out there. The first one is Mancera Choco Violet. And this one is basically insolence mixed with Montal Chocolate Greedy. This one is so, so good. And I got this cute little bottle. It's a two uh, a two fluid ounce, a 60 ml off of Max Aroma when they had this on sale. And this chocolate in this one is like a super dark, dusty chocolate. So the dustiness of the chocolate, the powderiness of the chocolate mixed with this powdery violet is just absolutely stunning. Um, I know it seems like a strange combination at first to put chocolate and violet together, but you guys, it just works. Trust me. This one is possibly even more gourmand than um, Chocolate Greedy is. Somehow the violet amps up the sweetness in this one. And on the dry down, as the violet dissipates, the chocolate crosses the finish line. But man, man, this is a good fragrance. It is Choco Violet, another great violet fragrance. And another honorable mention that I wanted to talk about, I don't have it, but it is the Leonge Noir by Givenchy and it is retailing for nearly $100 a bottle as well. It has been discontinued. And if you can grab a bottle, go ahead and get it. But I'm to the point where if I'm going to spend that kind of money, I'm probably going to go for lipstick on. And it's supposed to smell like lipstick on the uh, Leon's Noir, but I haven't smelled it, so I can't attest to that. But a lot of people talk about it. It is talked about a lot in the fragrance community. I see it mentioned a lot on these YouTube videos where people are talking about lipstick fragrances. Unfortunately, I don't have it. So if you guys have it, let me know in the comment section down below. And if enough of you guys say that it does smell like lipstick on, I will go ahead and get it and give it a try and let you guys know if it's close enough or if it just doesn't cut it. So leave me a comment down below and let me know. But that is a wrap up guys. That is the 20 fragrances I have that smell like lipstick, makeup type scents. Um, again, a thank you to Teddy Blake for sending me this beautiful handbag. I have all the links in the description box below on how you can get yours and also links to all these fragrances that I have mentioned today as well. So uh, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and like this video or dislike it, whichever one is best for you. And until next time, guys, take care and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.